It's not at all uncommon for a game to offer you a difficult choice, like will you turn to the light side or the dark side at the end, or what colour will you make your horse's hair in Breath of the Wild? Yes, nice. But sometimes a choice will come along that, for whatever reason, you absolutely get terribly wrong, and end up regretting both strongly and immediately. Maybe you were overtired, or just a little grouchy, or just not paying attention. Hey, we've all made choices in games that on reflection weren't the right one, and the Outside Xbox and Outside Extra teams are no exception. Up first is Andy from Outside Xbox. Poor Andy, what's he done? Well, crops aren't doing so well. I'm thinking it might be something in the water. The pump station is pretty run down. You could go take a look around the place, see if you find anything strange going on. All right, so I'm going to talk about a decision in Fallout New Vegas, possibly better than Fallout 3, definitely better than Fallout 4. Who knows if it's better than Fallout 5? Imagine Fallout 5. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Anyway, my character... Confess your crimes! In Fallout, there's a particular vault in Fallout New Vegas, Vault 34. So you're out exploring the wasteland, having a good time, and you come across some uh, sharecropper farms. And they're like, oh, you're that incredibly charismatic computer hacker slash locksmith. Actually, all our crops are dying and there's widespread famine. Uh, I think there's something something wrong. Can you investigate? And you get to Vault 34 and you find out that this vault is leaking radiation into the surrounding area, which is getting into the water table, killing all the crops. It's a bad situation. So if you play Fallout, you know that the, uh, the vaults were all part of an elaborate psychological experiment by vault Tech to see what would happen if you did awful things to people when they were locked up and couldn't escape. And the answer is that they went crazy, usually. I don't know how that's helping science, but uh, not entirely sure what the original experiment was in Vault 34, but the upshot of it is now Vault 34 is just radiation central. There are feral ghouls everywhere. You can't walk around without just taking a load of rad X and rad away. Everyone is a feral ghoul now, except for a group of people who were managed to lock themselves away in an isolated part of the vault, and they're okay. And you find these little logs from them on the computers. They're like, oh, me and my family, we're locked away in a part of the vault, and we're safe, but we can't get out. The only way to get out is if you were to reroute the computer to us, we could let ourselves out. On the flip side, you can also shut down uh, the reactor core of the vault, which will disable the computer entirely, but stop the radiation leaking into the surrounding area, and save the farms. You've got to make a decision. Do you shut down the reactor and doom the people who are trapped in the vault? Or do you free the people who are in the vault, but leave the reactor pumping out radiation into the surrounding area and getting in everyone's crops? And it's, it's a really hard decision, and I, I didn't know which way to go. And in the end, I decided to go with the sh shutting down the reactor to make sure that the crops were okay and the people living around here would have food. So I figured like the people who were in the vault were, they'd been there for a long time, that was sort of their life and they'd adjusted to it and they maybe make, made peace with it now and the people who are out there were all like, oh we're all dying and you know we're already living in a radioactive wasteland, now we're living in a radioactive wasteland with no food. They got food in the vault, they you know, they signed up for living in a vault. <laughs> but, but then, you know, you, you shut it down and uh, you get like a little thing where they're like, no, we're trapped here forever. And you're like, oh. I still, I, I mean, I say, I say I regret the decision and I do regret the decision because I feel bad for those people trapped in the vault, but I still don't know what the correct solution is in that situation. Usually in Fallout, uh, when you make a decision, you're given karma points. So you get like good karma or bad karma, depending on whether the decision is good or bad. At the end of this quest, you do it and there's no karma at all. You don't get positive karma, you don't get negative karma, regardless of how you choose. So the game is like, oh. You just get to look yourself in the mirror every day. Yep, yeah, yeah. The game is like, interesting. <laughs> so, sorry people of Vault 34. A lot of the games that I like tend to have moral choices in them, kind of like you end up with a good ending and a bad ending and most of the time I'm like, I am gunning for the good ending. But when I first got my hands on Prey, I, I found that it gave me a moral choice that made me go, oh. Because for those of you who haven't played Prey, it's very heavily inspired by Bioshock. And in Bioshock, you had the moral choice there of the little sisters. And it was whether you harvest them completely 
uh, like Luke did. I told you that in confidence. The heartless, heartless man. Or you can save them, which gives you slightly less Adam, but then you get the good ending. But Prey's version of this, instead of having adorable little children, you have fully grown adult convicts. The first person that you come across is this guy called Aaron Ingram, and he's in this big thing, and he's like, Hayla, let me out. I'm stuck in here. And you're like, okay, who are you? <laughs> I don't know who you are. And the computer in front of it goes, here is all of his information. Reading through, basically it has all the information of like the bad stuff. It involves like child trafficking, which you're like, what? Th that's evil. But then he's like, no, I was just trying to get the kids out of a bad situation. I never did anything to those kids. He would say that though, wouldn't he? Exactly. Because you can free him or and uh, this is the first thing that I tried. Uh, you can feed him to mimics. And this happens. and then immediately loaded my previous save <laughs> because I felt so bad. But like he was a murderer, but well, he could have been, I don't know. But then like, that's, that's the problem as you're like delving down into the story of Prey is that you realize that, you know, they've been doing all the, they've been saying a whole load of stuff to justify all these horrible things and horrible experiments. Because one of the things as well, he's like, look, look, I've got the code to that armory that's right there. If you let me out, I'll give you the code. And I'm like, yeah, right. But he does give you the code and then you can go in and you can get a load of weapons and stuff. Oh, you're the one person that showed me any real kindness. I won't forget it. Now, if you still want that code, it's apes. It was very clever. It made you think, made you kind of go, is it, you know, can we just throw someone's life away because they've either made some mistakes or possibly been set up so that they could be experimented on? Like, imagine if that was me in that situation and I'd done something that the government didn't like and like, but it wasn't anything bad. And but then, yeah, but then you're always, I, I, even after I let him out, I was like, I'll keep an eye on you. But yeah, I think it was a really interesting twist on the moral choice thing because, you know, some people might think, yeah, sod him, feed him to the mimics. He shouldn't have been a bad man. But is everyone redeemable? That's the question. And would you be redeemable for having murdered him? So, pray makes you think, man. <laughs> so that's it. All this time and that's all I get from you. How can you not see what this means to the Krogan? This base can't be destroyed. I won't allow it. The decision I most regret in video gaming uh, took place in Mass Effect 1 on Vermeer, a planet that looks a bit like a, uh, something from the Halo offcut bin. Um, and what you're probably going to think is that it's the decision whether to kill Caden or Ashley. It absolutely isn't. I kill Caden because that's the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't regret that at all. He was so boring. No, the uh, decision I made was to try and sort of make peace and fence it during the conversation uh, with Rex, who is a Krogan. When you land on Vermeer, you're chasing after Saren. Uh, he's found time to cure the Genophage, which is this sort of artificially created disease thing designed to control the Krogan and make them sterile, basically, so they can't reproduce because they're sort of like warmongering space frog things. They're fools, you should eat them. So, genophage, quite bad, really, actually. So when uh, Rex discovers there's a cure for it on Vermeer, he's rather keen that you don't destroy the cure and, and leave it to be buried um, forever. Our people are dying. This cure can save them. You're kind of representing the, the sort of ordered galaxies or whatever. And so you're sort of in a position where you're, you're, you don't really want to make that call. Although really, honestly, probably genophage is quite bad, isn't it? We are not a mistake. 
Is he going to be a problem? But what happened was, um, I decided to try and be diplomatic because I've been kind of going around doing space diplomacy in most situations. You could kind of talk people down. Anyway, so I'm there trying to talk Rex around without like necessarily agreeing either way. And then uh, Ashley, who is your sort of second in command, shoots Rex in the back of the head. I've got to do this my way. I don't think so, friend. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, I really should have wrapped that one up a little bit earlier. So yeah, Rex gets absolutely like domed by Ashley. You know, afterwards I was like, what the hell, Ashley? Why the hell did you do that? I was still talking to him. I'm sorry, sir. I couldn't take the risk that he might injure you. Or worse. Um, and she's like, well, I thought he might kill you and, you know, can't have him killing you. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's true. But also, please don't shoot people from our team. Okay, when... wouldn't have done it. That's true. That's true. Yes, the thing about Ashley, <laughs> also a bit of a, a space racist. She's not keen on aliens at all. Yeah, the thing that made it a bit more awkward, this whole situation was I think we were kind of somewhat dating as well <laughs> at the time, my, my shepherd and, and Ashley. Do you feel that when she murdered one of your allies that would have created? I think it did a little bit, yes, yeah. I think really... Bad date. Ba bad date, yes, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I learned that a commander should be able to make a, a firm decision either way rather than just sort of being wishy-washy because eventually someone's going to take the call for you and, and in this case, taking the call was shooting him in the head. And then later, in the third game, you go on to kind of cure the genophage anyway, or at least you have the option to. And so I did it in Rex's name. I felt really, really bad about it, Rex. I'm terribly sorry, you big, adorable space frog. Just walk right out of here and leave him. It's easy. You'll never forgive yourself, Selena. Save Batman, then get out of here. So in Batman Arkham City, you play as Catwoman some of the time, as you might well remember. And there's a bit where you're breaking into, if I remember this correctly, it's the confiscated goods vault. And you know, you're Catwoman, you're a cat burglar, that's your whole deal. So you bust in and then you're about to leave when over the radio, it's like... I repeat, Batman is down. Good. Oh, Batman was down at the steel mill and some rubble landed on him. And you're like, <laughs> okay, thanks for the update. Sounds good. I'll see you later. And, and then you're given like this, this uh, supposed moral choice. And you're like, oh, Arkham Games, you don't usually do that. What's going on here? And it's like, leave Arkham City. And you're like, okay, good, great. Or it's like, there's another way. And it's like, back into Arkham City, better go help Batman. Selena Kyle, she genuinely says, He'll be fine, he's Batman, isn't he? Or something like that. It's not like he'll die. It's Batman, right? So he's got like two bits of like, well, oh, I don't know, four inch concrete, like bat perched on his, did I mention they were very good abs? It wouldn't stop Batman. And Selena Cull knows it and she's, she's gotten the things. So this is a roundabout way of saying that I made the decision, I made the call to, to stay in character as Catwoman and just F off out of Arkham City. Bam, game over. Screw him. The thing I regret about it, it felt like the game was like, ah, gotcha, because you walk out and you're like, ah, screw him. And then Oracle's on and she's like, everyone's dead. My dad's dead. Jim Gordon's dead. <laughs> The Wayne Mansion is on fire and the butler, what's his name? He's dead too, she says, I imagine. Not what's his name. <laughs> so I, I regretted that because it felt like I fell for it. I, I was set up to fail and I, I took the bait and I, I failed hard because I made that canonically proper decision, but arguably the unethical one.
I get basically everything wrong in games, so I make wrong choices all the time, uh, but that's why save states are so amazing. But there's one game that doesn't let you uh, reload an old save, Dark Souls. And I did something in Dark Souls that I strongly regretted. I killed a boss slash character called Crossbreed Priscilla. Crossbreed Priscilla is one of the few bosses in the games who you don't have to fight when you meet her in this world, which is called the Painted World of Aramis. It's snowy and it looks quite nice. And you meet in, in a nice little enclave thing, uh, Crossbreed Priscilla. She explains to you right off the bat that you don't have to kill her. If you want, you can like walk off a plank at the end and like exit the world and all will be well. If thou hast misstepped into this world, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. If thou seekest I, thine desires shall be requited not. So having been offered this choice of like, what do you want to do? Do you want to like, do you want to fight or not fight? I just, I, yeah, I just, I waded in with my big sword. I expected as much from thee. Why dost thou hurry toward thine death? because it really felt like the thing to do, I suppose. And so she's going invisible and I'm wailing on her with the sword. I guess I didn't really think about it, but I started to think about it the first time I died. She said something in her dialogue. It was this. Why could thou not let us be? Didst thou not see why thou created this world? And that should have been my first sign that that maybe that like there was a little bit more to this situation than than I had assumed because it was a slightly odd thing to say. And I remember thinking that at the time, but also being like, "Hey, committed now. Let's go for it." And after a few time, a few tries, I I killed her. And when she dies, she says something that's really sad. She says, oh, but why? And I was like, "Huh." a weird thing to say. I was expecting more of a... So anyway, I collected my bunch of souls and I was on my way. Uh, and then it wasn't until later that I decided to like Google the law and that's when I really started to feel really, really bad because it turns out that crossbreed Priscilla is an outcast. She was sort of abandoned by her parents. It's sort of a mystery. People have theorised about who her parents are in the law of the game. There are some theories that her one of her parents is Seth the Scaleless, who is this horrible dragon who's really into like creepy science experiments. And she's definitely half dragon, I think. Everyone's agreed on that. What you do know is that the painted world of Aramis that you're sort of storming through is a place for outcasts and it's a place for misfits and people who don't fit in. And it's kind of a refuge for people who don't feel like they're welcome anywhere else. It's not causing anyone any trouble and I sort of charged in. I felt bad. Monster. Yeah. And the more I read, the worse I felt, to be honest. It should have struck me as more unusual, because it's quite far into the game that you're sort of offered the choice whether or not to, to like, kill her. Uh, anyway, it turns out that she's kind of like a fan favourite and that people really, like, like her character. And so I wish I hadn't killed her. And if I could, I would go back. But you can't, because everything that happens in Dark Souls has this weird sort of permanence. My whole Dark, Dark Souls playthrough was like a litany of errors. Like when I completed the game, we did it on a live stream and I accidentally got the bad ending because I walked too far off the stage. Ah! Uh, so maybe we should just call the whole thing non-canon. Crossbreed Priscilla. Soz. Uh, yeah, well, it's short for sorry. She knows that. She's she's up on the lingo. Okay, surprise! Bonus segment. It's me again. It's Jane. Hi. What? In a new studio, new outfit, because I remembered the thing I really regret, and not just sarcastically regret, like that Batman number, something I genuinely felt bad and regretful about doing in a video game. So let's talk about A Night in the Woods. A Night in the Woods, you're supposed to, you know, talk to everyone, you rediscover your, you know, relationship with your parents, having come back from college, reconnect with people, and yeah, just, you know, make time for the people in your life that you love, like, much like in the real world. Well, I had been really reconnecting with my mum, yeah, seeing each other eye to eye, and she was like, 
come visit me at the church where I volunteer one day. We'll catch up, why not? So I went off and had my lovely day out in the town of whatever it was called. Spoke to my friends, dosed around, mooched about, jumped on some rooftops and completely forgot to go and visit my mother, which I guess is a decision if you look at it one way. Anyway, I didn't go and see her and the next time I spoke to her in our kitchen, we had a massive blazing row. You know, one of those rows where it's not really about what it's about, it's about something much more important, but no one's really saying it. One of those kind of rows. If I just, if I just come to visit you, would this be different? And I don't think it would have been different because that's not the way a night in the woods works. I think it was just one of those precious moments, one of those rare opportunities in life you have to be with the people you love and you squander it. And then the next time you see them, it's just, it's gone. You've moved on to the next thing. And the next thing is about how you're a disappointment and you, you, you're not living your life right as a daughter. And are we still talking about A Night in the Woods? <laughs> I don't know. But it was the only game that ever made me think I should really call my mother right now and more often generally. So in terms of regrets, and I don't have that many about video games because I'm, you know, full power through to the end, make the hard decisions, do what you have to do, renegade shepherd, it, when necessary. Uh, that was a decision in the loosest sense of the word that I regretted. <laughs> So there are some decisions that we kind of went, oh, maybe we should have done something else or grr, can't believe they made us choose that. Can't believe For the record, it. I uh, didn't know that you got any Adam if you spared the little sisters. Yeah, just... no, that's just <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> if you have any experiences similar to ours, pop them in the comments down below. Which one of us did you most relate to? Let us know that as well. Did you have the same one? Is it? You, are you really in sync with us that much? <laughs> I'd be scared if so. But if you uh, would like to see more from us and more on like how we felt about video games and how they affected us, and maybe you can watch the heartbreaks that we are still not over. And uh, if you agreed with Jane that, you know, Batman can handle himself, maybe check out this video uh, about all the times that he's totally, totally killed that person. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't safe. <laughs> that person's totally dead. And also, you should subscribe if you enjoyed. But thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.